Let's go. Hey, what's up everybody? Hope you're doing real well. I'm out in the woods today and I am going to camp tonight. I know two weeks ago I posted a video and I was ready to go camping. Um, I had planned on it. I was all set. I was all packed. And then I just got a weird vibe. I, you know, I couldn't really explain it um, other than it was just my gut feeling and my intuition. I just had to trust my gut and I just wasn't feeling it, you know. Um, but today, tonight, I'm feeling it. It's, it's nothing but good positive vibes today. I, I've got a nice light pack on. Um, I'm pretty pumped about staying tonight because I'm trying out a new sleep system. I'm trying out uh, some new food to cook for dinner and I'm glad you're gonna be with me. So stick around. All right, so I think I found a good spot. I think right in here is where I'm gonna make my camp. Here, let me put my pack down and I'll show you around and just kind of show you uh, the, the layout and what I'm planning. There's a nice little clearing here. There's some deadfall back behind me, but I can use these pieces here and there. Um, I can use that for uh, firewood tonight. Surrounded by some trees, and you can see kind of right up above, there is kind of a clearing. That tree right there is not my favorite tree. It's definitely got some dead branches in it. You can see there's kind of a broken one right there. Um, looks like a couple of limbs have some fungus on it. So I don't know that the whole tree is dead, but it looks like it'll be okay. If the winds were supposed to be high tonight or this afternoon, um, I don't think I would stay underneath that tree, but the wind's gonna be really low. I think it's like five to 10 miles an hour max. Uh, so, you know, nothing much to worry about and uh, I think I'm gonna be okay. So I've got a good spot and uh, let me show you a little bit of my pack and what my plan is for sleeping tonight. Okay, so this is my pack that I brought. Um, this is a one Tigris. Um, I believe it's a 35 liter pack. They go for pretty cheap on Amazon. I think you can get one for about 50 bucks. I can tell you that in the couple of years that I've had this bag, the only complaint I ever had on the bottom of the bag where the straps run through these loops on the bottom. Um, I did have it start to come loose one time. I took it to a local uh, tailor who does some hemming and um, work on, on clothing mostly. I showed him what the deal was and he was like, oh yeah, I'll knock that out for you. I think I paid him like 10 bucks. And he like, and he really heavily stitched that in and reinforced it. And ever since then I haven't had a problem. All right, so this is what I'm most excited about is this sleep system that I'm trying out. I have a USGI, um, Gore-Tex Woodland Bivy cover. So it's, it's a sleeping bag cover. I got it off of eBay for about $65 plus shipping, so less than a hundred bucks. And my goal with this thing is just to lay it on the ground. What you do, or what my plan to do for this is, insert my REI flash pad. I'm going to put the sleeping bag on top of that and then insert both of these things into this bivy bag. And she's in there. Okay, let me talk you really quickly through what I'm carrying besides my sleep system. Um, I always carry like a little shemag uh, with me. It's great just as a camp towel. This is the, the bag from my DD tart. I've got my glasses and my contacts, my extra pair of socks. Um, I did bring an extra long sleeve shirt to put underneath this one in case I get cold and I can sleep in tonight. Um, clean pair of underwear. I've got uh, a cord to charge my phone. Um, overnight I've brought a couple of little uh, portable batteries. I did bring a thermometer uh, just to kind of set out so I could see what the temperature was getting down to. I've got a small vial of just some little pills and things like my Claritin, Excedrin, um, there's even uh, like a Dayquil in here, just, just in case I ever get to not feeling great but I want to stay out. This is my food bag and I'm going to wait until a little later to talk you through this because uh, I'm going to keep it a surprise. I am just stoked about uh, what I'm going to be cooking tonight for dinner. That's it for this main compartment. I do keep in the back, there's uh, I guess a spot where you could keep like a portable uh, water container and I keep a little foam pad. Um, in here it's just a green foam pad so that if I'm doing a lot of kneeling I can put my knees down. I'm gonna leave that in there. Um, in the next pack I brought some um, some some things just to help me pass the time. So I brought a couple of books, 
I can do some brushing up on my uh, wild edibles, on my knots, and I'm currently reading The Tao of Inner Peace. Actually, I'm rereading this, and then of course, how could I go anywhere with my, my advanced bushcraft uh, field guide here? So I've got some reading that I can do a little later. I'm not using a lot of paracord at all tonight, um, so I didn't bring a lot. I brought a small thing of bank line, and I brought this little length of paracord right here, um, actually just to practice those knots with. This is my fire starter kit. I've got a ferro rod, some cotton balls soaked in uh, petroleum jelly, um, some matches and a Bic lighter. I did bring an extra container of water. I've got my one quart canteen on me and it's full. And that's really it in this pack. Um, I've got my headlamp in here and like I mentioned, a small, just a small, small uh, wrap of bank line just in case I need it. And then finally, I only have one more pouch. I've got my, uh, my work gloves. I did stick my, my wallet in here because I don't like to leave that in my car um, parked overnight. And of course, bring your baby wipes or your butt wipes or whatever you're going to use in case you have to do the deed out here. Oh, I've got my Laplander folding saw so that I could uh, just saw down some pieces of wood for the fire if I need it. So that's it. That was 20 pounds of my pack. Oh, hey, I forgot to mention what I carry on my belt. Just so that you know, I, I carry this every time. Um, I like this little uh, detachable utility belt. I keep my one quart canteen on here on my left side and it has a little extra pouch. Um, it's small so I keep my three um, AAA batteries to replace my headlamp in there. On this side I carry my TBS bore bushcraft knife. I really like this knife. It's the first legit like bushcraft knife that I ever paid you know real good money for. And then I keep this um, SOG multi-tool. I don't always need this um, and I could probably do without it but if I've got the space for it here on the belt usually um, I do try to carry it. You can see that the sleep system there it will cover my face right it's gonna come up over me. If I took a springy um, sapling or um, or a, a length of a, a limb it would need to be probably it would need to be a live piece of wood uh, to get that springiness. I'm thinking about the length of you know, maybe my elbow to my elbow when I do my hands like this. Um, I can always cut it shorter. I can't add it if I cut it too short. So I think I'm going to go out and try to find a, 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 a nice springy limb uh, about that distance that I can maybe insert into there and see if I can make that thing work where it'll hold it up off my face. So I'm going to go find that springy limb that I'm looking for and you guys can come along with me. Okay, so I did find something that worked. I went ahead and put it in um, before showing you just so you didn't have to sit here and watch me struggle over and over again. I wanted to make sure it would work. It's a little bit wonky, but it works. It, it keeps it, um, it'll keep it off of my face. The interesting thing is gonna be tonight how I get it in there. It really does better, it seems, if it's already zipped up, right? If I unzip it, this thing kind of springs out. It'll be interesting to see how this functions uh, tonight. I've got a ton of time just to chill. Uh, I'm gonna drink a little water. I think I may grab my little pamphlet that I have on uh, wild edibles and um, I don't know, maybe see if I can find a few or locate a few. I don't know that I'll actually eat anything unless I 100% identify it. Okay, I think I've found some of this ostrich fern here. Uh, you can see it has this kind of coiled head on it. Collect coiled fiddleheads in spring and scrape off the brown scales. Steam and served buttered. I think I found here the ostrich fern, but um, I'm going to leave them. I'm going to let them be. Kind of keep walking. So this is easy to identify. Here's a little patch of clover. The entire plant is edible. I won't eat the root ends, but we kind of eat up here around the top that's not dirty. 
Mmm. Mmm. That's a nice taste, actually. I almost want to say a burst of citrus. Like there's a little uh, lemon kind of flavor that pops right out um, immediately. And then, you know, that flavor is fading and, you know, it just kind of tastes like salad or something. Let's check out some knots. Square knot. Oh, there you go. Tie your shoe. Taut line hitch. Clove hitch, love that. If you have an open end and you're just trying to put it on there, what's cool to do is to do, take the rope and go right over left, right over left with like little loops and then do left loop over the right loop and then take your end and insert it and then just pull that tight and break the stick. But that'll tie your clove hitch as well. Handcuff a burglar, wow. Yep, just ask him to, uh, to wait right there while you tie this burglar knot. Granny knot. Yeah, the catch a fish knots. There's a palomar knot, I really like that knot. Be a cowboy, hmm. Oh, there you go, rope a calf if you ever need to. One, two, wrap him up. Yeah. Build a shelter, so we make a tripod. That's used that a lot. A knot they don't show in this that I use a lot is the Canadian jam knot. You just take uh, the end, form like a little stop knot, like a little overhand knot, scooch down a little bit more, do another overhand knot, but then before tightening it, what you would do is like if you're bundling sticks together, I don't have many, but you would wrap this around and you would take your loose end and feed that through the loop there. Whoop, just like that. And when you pull it, it's pretty neat what happens. What it does is it tightens down on itself, but that in this little knot you tied on the end becomes like a stop knot. So you can kind of, you can ratchet this down and it stays tight. And then whenever you're ready to loosen it, you just take that little end with the knot on it and you pull that back and it opens up. That's a really handy knot uh, to have. But the king of all knots, the bowline. The rabbit comes up through the hole, around the tree, back through the hole. There he is. Watch this. Did you see it? It's pollen. It is now time to unveil my dinner for tonight. I will keep that secret no more. We are, uh, surprise one more time, it's inside the snug pack. <laughs> and another layer for tonight's dinner. We have a big ball of tin foil. No, 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 seriously. Catch this. This tin foil, that's, that's really like the size of my forearm I made last night. And what is in here is some shrimp, some Cajun-styled smoked sausage, a half of a sweet onion, some baby red potatoes that I have quartered into some smaller pieces, and I even took uh, one ear of corn and I cut it into four pieces and have placed that in here. And then I seasoned it with some dried basil leaves and some zatarains Cajun crab boil mix and I also sprinkled some Old Bay seasoning on top. I folded it all up. I, I used multiple layers of tin foil because I didn't want to burn it. Um, I didn't want to take any risks of leaking out or anything and I stuck it in the freezer and it froze overnight and I didn't take it out until I was ready to leave the house today. I'm going to place this on the coals for about probably 30-35 minutes 
take it off of the coals, probably let it sit for another 10 minutes just to kind of steam cook in the bag, and then I am going to feast tonight on on basically what is a, a, a low country boil, is what we, we call it here in the south, a low country boil. Woo, it's hot in there. All right, it's been on there for about 35, 36, seven minutes, something like that, so approaching 40 minutes and uh, it's time. Oh man. Okay, let's get into this thing. Oh, I can smell it already. The smell is amazing. Here we go, here we go. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Here's the shrimp. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's done. Mmm. Oh man. Let's go. Piece of sausage. Mmm. Mmm. Let's get a potato. Down the hatch. Mm. That's it, this is official. This is the best thing that I have ever cooked outside, ever. Another shrimp. Mm. I don't think I've ever been so excited over camp food. This is not roughing it, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm not eating tree bark out here. Oh, let's try some of this corn. Look at that corn. Look at that corn. Hmm. Fall off the cob. Good. Man, I feel like going to church. Woo. I'm gonna catch the spirit. Well, it's just about eight o'clock killed that dinner it was fantastic I'm just gonna relax I mean this is a great time to kind of kick back reflect you know kind of meditate a little bit and um, you know whether or not that's sitting around you know home with your legs crossed or not I don't think it has to be that type of meditate um, it can just be a really reflective time of day here just after sunset so I'm gonna sit and just kind of enjoy Coming up on 10:45, and uh, not too tired, but I'm ready to lay down and rest a little bit. Let me see if I can get this thing right with this uh, <laughs> this stick here. Yep. Where's my stick? Watch me struggle. Here we go. Oh my gosh. I think that actually worked. There we go. Yeah, it's holding it off of my face. I'm in here. Not too bad. Good night, everybody. See you in the morning. just after 5 a.m. had a pretty good night um, I did you know woke up two or three times I got out of the the bivy bag one time to go pee um, uh, it was right around three o'clock um, I had a little trouble going back to sleep but I did drift back off to sleep but 
I woke up just around five um, to the sound of just big drops of water hitting the bivy bag and I had to get out of the bivy bag because I had not I had left some things out I wanted to kind of secure them in case it did start raining it, it was nice and warm the whole night um, I did need the stick because the that kept the bivy off of my face there was a lot you know a good bit of condensation in there where I'm breathing um, but that'll dry out so um, overall you know I really like the bivy bag and I'm definitely going to use that again Whew. right in there. You only see three pieces of bacon. I'm sorry to report that we've got a man down. Hmm. This piece is good. Okay, yeah. Get this out, right? There's a little shell. Peel that off. Hmm? Ooh, look at there. Yeah. Yeah, that's doable, man. I like that. I like that. I would do that again. All right, so it's almost 8 o'clock, I think. Um, the action is pretty much done. I'm going to a pack-up camp and then get out of here. I want to thank you so much for watching this video and for being with me out on this camping trip. Um, I'm going to plan and do lots more here in the spring and, and even the summer. So subscribe to the channel if you'd like to, and uh, if not, just kind of check in from now and then and see what I'm up to. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Be good.